Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're going to be making a gaming PC. I'm not quite sure what kind of gaming PC, but I do know it will have a heck of a lot of Asus hardware. So that being the case, firstly, let me just get this out of the way. This is not sponsored content. Asus did provide the hardware for free, but that is the extent of it. So they approached me, said, would you like to build a PC using a lot of our new hardware? And yeah, I said, well, that sounds like a lot of fun, so let's do it. But yeah, to be crystal clear, I was not paid to make this video. But Steve, free hardware is getting paid. Well then, if that's the case, then I guess we've been paid for almost every video we've ever done on the channel. So yeah, she'll alert. <laughs> but yeah, let me be a little more specific on that one. We aren't getting paid using any recognized currency and we can do whatever the hell we like with this hardware. Uh, that is to say there's been no rules or guidelines set by ASUS. And let's be honest, I always do whatever the hell I want anyway. So getting to the actual build. On hand, I have what looks to be a rather somewhat random assortment of hardware. Like I said, ASUS just approached me. They said we have a new case. Uh, we have a new all-in-one liquid cooler and a new power supply. And yeah, we'll put that together with some other hardware that we're quite well known for, such as our graphics cards and motherboards, and you can do a build. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much what's landed us here. But yeah, they threw in the tough Z390 Plus gaming Wi-Fi, so a motherboard that supports Intel processors, and then the ROG Strix GTX 1660 Ti, which is a graphics card that supports games, does so quite well. Uh, and then they've also teamed up with Team Group, who like to do a lot of, yeah, I won't use that, that pun. Anyway, uh, <laughs> they've provided some tough RGB memory, so that should go pretty well with our tough motherboard. And then we have a tough SSD, so yeah, it's gonna be pretty tough. And since we do have an Intel Z390 motherboard and a GTX 1660 Ti, I thought probably a perfect pairing for this kind of hardware combo would be that new Core i5-9400F processor that I just purchased for the comparison with the Ryzen 5 2600. So that would be a, I think that's fair to say that would be a perfect fit for this build. But then I realized we have this guy, a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler, and it doesn't really make sense to throw one of those on a locked Intel CPU. Will be nice and cool and quiet, but probably overkill a $20 uh, air cooler will achieve pretty much the same thing on that part. So that being the case, I sprung for another new processor, the Core i5-9600K. And quite shockingly, I've never actually tested or reviewed that CPU before. So yeah, I thought this would be a pretty good opportunity to snag one for future testing. With that sorted, it's time to get building. So while I put this thing together, I'll talk about the parts used rather than play some background music. First up, let's talk about the Tough Gaming GT501 case. This thing is an absolute beauty, and despite being released late last year, I really haven't seen that many reviews or builds using it, so I'm glad we can check it out. Obviously, looks are subjective, but for a gaming focus case, I really do like the look of this thing. What's not subjective though is the price, and at $140 US it's certainly not cheap, but for a case of this build quality, size and design, it's not outrageous either. Granted, something like the Fractal Design Mesh of c is much cheaper at around $90 US, but you don't get quite the same level of features. Inside, the GT501 comes with three 120mm Aura RGB fans pre-installed, and they're in the front. They're also rated for 1200 RPM, and then there's a single 140mm PWM fan in the rear. You can also expand upon this setup with three 120mm fans or two 140mm fans in the top of the case. As for radiators, you can fit up to a 360mm rad in the top or front with a 140mm rad in the rear. If you're not interested in liquid cooling, then the case can support up to a 180mm tall air cooler. As for the graphics card, there's really no length limit here, as you can put graphics cards as long as 420mm. And the same kind of applies for the power supply, 240mm uh, will fit just fine. For storage, there's four 2.5 or 3.5 combo drive cages. And then adjacent from the motherboard tray, there are three 2.5 drive bays. Oh, and for the motherboard, you can fit up to a 12 inch by 10.9 inch extended ATX motherboard. ASUS calls this thing their mobile battle station, and despite weighing almost 11 kilos, and that's empty, they encourage you to lug it around with a pair of woven cotton carry handles, and they say these are safe to transport up to 30 kilograms. So who said computer nerds don't work out? 
Getting this build started, I quickly installed the Core i5 9600K processor onto the ASUS TUF Z390 Plus Gaming Wi-Fi motherboard, along with the 16GB kit of Team Group's T-Force Delta TUF Gaming RGB DDR4 3200CL16 memory. The motherboard costs $180 US and only features a basic 4-phase VRM, and for less, the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Elite offers a true 6-phase VRM, so I'm not necessarily recommending the TUF model, especially at this price point, but it is what we're using for this ASUS themed build. I haven't personally tested this motherboard, but that is something I can do in the future. With the motherboard, processor and memory installed, I decided to hook up the ASUS ROG Ryu 240mm all-in-one liquid cooler. Since we already have three fans pre-installed in the front of the case, and the GTX 1660 Ti doesn't really dump that much heat, I've decided to top mount the radiator, forcing the heat generated by the Core i5 processor out the top of the case. The cooler is another reasonably expensive item, costing $155 US, though to be fair that makes it cheaper than similar spec items from Corsair. There are cheaper models though available from the likes of Cooler Master, Deep Cool, EVGA, Enemax and Thermaltake for example, so make sure you check reviews comparing those models. Then powering everything is the lowest end power supply ASUS offers, the beastly ROG Thor 850. It's an 80 plus platinum 850 watt fully modular RGB power supply with a live dash OLED panel and a 10 year warranty. So naturally it's not going to be cheap, $205 for this one, so yeah, certainly not cheap. If you want a cheap 850 watt power supply, you can get something like the Corsair CX850 MV2 or the Bit Phoenix Whisper M, they both cost just $90. And even if you want a platinum rated model, there are much cheaper options such as the G-Skill PS850P or the Corsair HX850. Both of those cost just $140 US. For around the $200 mark, so the same price as the ASUS unit, you can get 1200 watt units from FSP and Thermaltake, such as the Tough Power Grand RGB 1200 watt. That said, none of these units have an OLED display, so depending on how much importance and value you place on that, the ROG thought might be worth the asking price. Next, I installed the Team Group T-Force Delta S Tough Gaming RGB SSD into the bottom mounting position. For this build, we only have the 250GB version and it sells for around $50 US. That said though, I'd never personally buy this particular model as you can get twice the storage capacity for $20 more, so a 40% increase for 100% more storage. So yeah, just get the 500GB version of the T-Force Delta S. But it is a pretty cool SSD with the RGB lighting. I kind of mocked the whole RGB SSD thing with Tim when he first used it, but in this case it does look kind of cool, and it'd be kind of nice if we had three, because I think that would look pretty spectacular in this one. Then lastly I hooked up the ROG Strix GTX 1660 Ti. This is an awesome quality 1660 Ti that I have reviewed on the channel, though again it is a premium product and at $325 US it is a bit of a tough sell. Anyway, we've now pieced this thing together, it's time to run a few stress tests and see how it performs. Okay, so here's my complete all ASUS build, or at least as ASUS as you can possibly make any one build. And I think it looks pretty good. I think most of you guys will agree. It's not too over the top, not too gamery, but it is meant to be pretty gamerish. And I, I think it's yeah, kind of a nice balance there. It's not yeah, too ridiculous. Anyway, I quite like it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If I were building this computer here or a similar computer for myself or for a friend, uh, I wouldn't change too much, but I would change the power supply. The ROG Thor 850, it's a really nice looking power supply. Actually, it looks quite spectacular really, even when it's not turned on. But as impressive as it looks, uh, well, it's pointless in this build, isn't it? Because as you can quite plainly see or can't see, there's a plastic shroud over the power supply. And you could opt to not use the plastic shroud, but uh, this one of the advantages of this case is that big basement section. I was pretty, pretty loose and wild with the uh, cable management on this one, just quickly put it all together and shoved everything down there and on the back side of the case uh, with the door off it looks quite good because everything's just stuffed in there. Uh, so you'd have to spend a lot more time and energy making all the cables nice and neat if you wanted to show off your power supply. But yeah, anyway I think in this build it is just way too expensive and yeah a bit pointless because you can't see it. But anyway, as far as I can tell, the power supply is very high quality, so if you're building a higher end, more expensive rig, then it probably would make sense to use something like the ROG Thor. 
but in this instance you can easily buy a similar quality power supply for about half the price and that being the case that's what I recommend you do especially for a PC like this that's worth around $1500 US. I was pretty impressed with the all-in-one liquid cooler uh, that's got some neat features you can see the temperature here that looks kind of cool uh, really high quality resolution there and yeah you can change the logo and do a few things with it and performance was great so the system peaked at 88 degrees in a 20 degree room and that was after an hour of prime 95 and most crucially i should note that that was with the 9600k overclocked to 5 gigahertz seemed to do that really easily and yeah i think 88 degrees in prime 95 after an hour with a 9600k at 5 gigahertz is a pretty respectable result from a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. Have to admit, I was in a bit of a hurry to get this build done so I could move on to other things. So I just applied the five gigahertz profile in the Tough Z390 Plus Gaming Wi-Fi motherboards BIOS. And that worked really well. Just applied that one setting, rebooted the system, and I was at five gigahertz. It did apply 1.27 volts. That's, um, it was perfectly stable there. Uh, but you could probably get that 88 degree load temp down a little bit with a bit of voltage tuning because I reckon it would run with a bit less voltage. But anyway, for a one sort of click tune option, that's pretty impressive. And you could run this system 24-7 with that overclock applied without a problem. As for the ROG Strix GTX 1660 Ti, well, that thing ran really cool as expected because it has, well, it has an extreme overkill heatsink on it really it's just a massive gtx 1660 ti um, and i have reviewed it so we know what that one's all about it ran at 57 degrees under full load after an hour of gaming and the vrm hit 43 degrees so very very cool card there that's a few degrees cooler than what we got in a, a corsair crystal 570x test case but the room temperature was a few degrees cooler as well so basically the same results we saw in our review of that card. So yeah, really cool and quiet card there. Uh, whether it makes sense spending that much on a GTX 1660 Ti, well, that's a completely different matter. We discussed that in the review. So if you wanna know more about this card, then check out our review of it. Uh, as for gaming benchmarks, I'm not going to bother with any of those because, well, spoiler alert, the GTX 1660 Ti performs like a GTX 1660 Ti, and we've done plenty of GTX 1660 Ti benchmarks on the channel, so I don't think we need any more. When paired with a Core i5 9600K at 5GHz, there's no CPU bottlenecks there, so you can expect the full performance that we've shown on the channel already. In the end, some really great temperature results there. I don't believe this case has any airflow issues. Seemed to pump a lot of cool air through it and coming out the back there. And as I said, everything ran nice and cool. So yeah, personally, I really like the GT501. Uh, really nice case, getting a little bit pricey, probably not the most competitively priced case uh, in its sort of mid tower range, but it's unique looking. The build quality and design are excellent and it's extremely easy to work with. Like I said, that big plastic uh, shroud, the basement section that made cable management very easy. There's plenty of cable management room on the back as well. Comes with lots of fans pre-installed. And yeah, overall, I think it's a pretty solid offering from ASUS. I think this might be their first ever standalone case, but not 100% sure on that one. Anyway, it's quite a good offering. And yeah, with these little handles on top, it makes, makes transporting it relatively easy. I mean, it is a complete, this is just over 20 kilos, but yeah, you can, uh, you can pick it up and carry it off with relative ease. Uh, and that is going to do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed my all ASUS build challenge thing. Uh, yeah, it turned out a bit better than I thought it was going to. I thought we had a real mismatch of components there, but the 9600K with the uh, GTX 1660 Ti, that's not a bad combo. You could go with an RTX 2060, an RTX 2070, or even an RTX 2080 with that CPU and get pretty good performance. Again, it's probably not my first pick for a CPU. I'd probably rather save a bit of money in this price range and get something like the Ryzen 5 2600X. Uh, makes a little bit more sense and it's got 12 threads, so it may age a little better. But anyway, that's a, that's a whole different thing that I don't want to get into for this one. Enjoyed the build, it was a lot of fun, and it's certainly a really good gaming system, so you wouldn't be disappointed with that. But not really a build guide either, because like I said, I wouldn't use that power supply and a few other things. But anyway, that's that's really it for this one. I'm looking forward to getting back to some benchmarking. We have a really cool live stream coming up later in the week, if Tim can get better. 
Uh, you guys might have missed News Corner on Friday. A few other videos were meant to come out from Tim, but he is very, very sick at the moment. Poor little guy. Hopefully he will be better soon. Of course, I'm giving him lots of support and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but yeah, hopefully he'll be better because Thursday we want to do a live stream build off. We're going to do, we're going to build a system each for Computex that we're going to take in our bags, our carry on luggage. So a desktop computer. Anyway, that's going to be interesting, whole lot of fun. And hopefully Tim recovers so we can do that Thursday because it was meant to happen today, but it didn't. So anyway. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, like it, subscribe, do all that stuff. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.